Hey guys, this is Punchy back again to bring you another video, and uh, this time we are doing, uh, I'm doing actually a movie that came out this year, and I know I've done it before like four times, but um, I just, uh, I don't really do it often, but uh, this movie... I wanted to talk about because um, this movie um, it's an interesting movie and uh, it's called where the scary things are and it's from 2022 this year of course like I said and um, um, I found this movie because my mom got Paramount to watch football or something. You know, the football wasn't on there. It was a whole thing. But, like, I saw this movie on there. And I was like, uh, I was looking at the cover. And it has, like, this clown amusement park thing. It looked like this, like, clown head with an opening that led to, like, this park. Amusement park. Uh, okay, that's, that's dope. Uh, by the way, I didn't see that in the movie at all. Um, doesn't look like it's in the movie at all. It's just a cool cover art. You know, kind of like how they did in the, the 80s and just like still do. Where they'll put something on the cover that has nothing to do with the movie but kind of represents the movie, which it does. There is kind of a amusement park. It's not an amusement park, but it's like a, it's a haunted house. Which apparently it's a real haunted house uh, where they filmed that and uh, located in Pennsylvania like it's a real attraction. So that was cool, but yeah, there, I unless I missed it, no giant clown um, head, but uh, so I was like, oh, that's, that's cool. And then I was looking at the synopsis and at the top of the synopsis is like, it doesn't like say exactly this, but I was like, Goon, it's like, do you like Goonies? Do you like Stand By Me? It's like, well, this is that with a dark twist. And I'm like, I like Goonies. I like Stand By Me. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like, because I'm a sucker for those types of movies. Like, uh, just a group of kids going on an adventures. And even teenagers, but like, I, I just love movies like Goonies, Monster Squad, Lost Boys. Sandlot, you know, Little Giants, just stuff like that where it's just these group of kids going on a journey and having fun. And, um, I like, uh, movies like that. And, um, and even like horror movies like that. I like the original It, I like the new It. Um, I just like those types of movies and um so if you have like a group of kids in your movie going on journey and bonding and stuff i like it and i like it with teenagers too so um i was watching it so i put it on and um it is not it is not like a darker version of goonies or, or stand by me it's it, and it's a, it's a group of kids. They kind of go on an adventure. They do things, but it is not like I like. Cause I, the thing is, some people might consider this a coming of age story. I don't really know. I don't really consider it that. Cause they, there are elements there of coming to age, but it doesn't really. I don't know, capitalize on it or do much with it. It kind of does. It kind of does. Like other than like a dark coming of age story, and this is up that uh, John showed me like years back. Uh, Super dark times. That's how you do a dark coming of age story. That one's really fucking good. This one uh, missed the mark, but there are still qualities I like. I. Because I, I did find myself getting engaged throughout the movie. Like, every time I felt bored 
um, there would always be something that comes in and pick me up, and I'm like, okay, I'm back with you, movie. I'm back with you. The problem is, I got bored more than once, and thought about shutting the movie off more than once. Yes, I literally thought about shutting off the movie. I usually don't do that. To, to give you, um, like, like a lot of people don't like the Slender Man movie. I enjoyed that movie. I never thought about shutting that off. I, I thought the ending sucked, but, like, um, I like Slender Man. So if that gives you any, like, um, kind of, uh, idea, I'm not too harsh on movies. Like, I enjoy a lot, like, there's some movies I despise. But, like, I don't, I'm not, like, a hardcore critic ready to nitpick and tear something to the ground. But, this movie, I don't know, man. Like, for as much as it does good, there's a lot it does bad. And, um... I don't quite know if the bad outweighs the good, but it just might with this movie. Alright, so, um, to get into the plot, uh, this movie is about a group of teens at this, uh, or, well, some are te they're like high schoolers, I think, or one's like a middle schooler, one's like a little fucking ten-year-old, and the rest are all, like, older, I think, maybe middle school, high school maybe freshman high school, you know, not too old, maybe, maybe even middle school, something like that, maybe, like, the last year of middle school, but, um, all these kids, the, these group of kids, and they all have, like, nicknames and stuff, and they hang out at this, like, uh, abandoned, hot, haunted attraction, and they call themselves the Dockers. And what that is, is, is some of them are able to hack into computers and get information on people and blackmail them. Like, one of the kids, Scribbles, is literally seen blackmailing a teacher in the beginning of the movie. And, like, I don't know how many minutes, but, like, it's, like, near the beginning of the movie, he's straight up blackmailing a fucking teacher. Um... And these kids do viral videos. Uh, the main kid, Bran, he's like a little... He's not the main kid, but he's like the youngest of the group. And he's like the main guy with the camera. And Bran is an interesting character because he's a piece of shit. He's like no really redeemable qualities. And I, I'm going to be saying that about a lot of these people. Um, which I don't know, that might have been intentional, but, uh, no redeemable qualities. He's just a little shit with a camera that likes to make homeless people fight and get, uh, views off of it. And, uh, he's just, he, he's, like, he's filming, like, there's one girl in their group, and she's, like, the leader, and he keeps filming her butt, and he's, like, making jokes and, like, making fun of the kid with diabetes in their group, and, like, he's just a little shit, and he mispronounces words, and he's, like, got this kind of high-pitched voice, and it's, like, yeah, kid, I know you in real life. I've seen you. I've seen little evil, sadistic bastards like you. Um, so, it's kind of funny, not in an endearing kind of mouth kind of way from the Goonies. Where it's like, yeah, you're a troublemaker, but you're not like a bad kid. You're just a little asshole. No, this this kid's a little sociopath. This kid's a little psychopath. That One of his videos, he sets a homeless man's head on fire. For views. But it's entertaining because I see it as a parody of... Like... The, the rest of the kids don't really come off as parodies, but he kind of comes off as a parody of the real type of, like, little fucking douchebags, these sadistic douchebags who only care about likes and will actually, like, do shit like... Because some kids do try to do shit like this. Not to this extreme, but they'll 
kids are psychotic, man. And now where they're giving shit like YouTube and TikTok and they're giving the goal, get views, get popular. Dude, kids don't think about shit sometimes. And especially evil kids like this, they will do anything for views and shit. And like, um, I really like that aspect, um, that kid who, that little, that I really, yeah, I thought his character was funny. I didn't like his character, his character was an evil little piece of shit. But like, he was a funny character. I could stand to be around him because I just laughed at him. Um, but yeah, he is only one member of this group. Uh, we have also, and I might be forgetting people, um, we have Snacks, who is the most likable character of this group. Um, his, like, his dad's kind of mean to him and stuff, and like, all their parents are kind of like, not mean, mean, but like, you know, not really great parents. Some might be trying, but, like, they're harsh. And, you know. And, um. But, uh. You know, he. He's kind of the conscience of the group. And, yeah, he goes along with some of the fucked up shit. But he doesn't really agree with it. He's the one with the most moral compass. We don't really get to explore it too much. It's there, but it's not really the... We don't really... We get, like, in in looks at these people's lives, but since there's so many of them, and since they are trying to kind of be deep, because they're trying to... I think they're trying to do a character study coming of age of these kids, but at the same time, they're also trying to do something else, which I will get into later, and they kind of clash, and we kind of don't get as much as we could have. And, um... Uh, but yeah, this, uh, the, the Snacks character, which, I, one rant I want to go on. I do not know why these kids have nicknames like this. Like, Snacks doesn't really eat snacks throughout the movie. So it's like, I don't get why he's called Snacks. I really don't. There's another kid called Scribbles, which I don't know why he's called Scribbles. Because, I guess because he hacks, but I don't know. But like... Like, in the Goonies, sorry to make comparison, but they made the comparison themselves. Every kid's nickname made fucking sense. Mouth was named Mouth because he never shut the fuck up and he had a big mouth and he talked shit. Chunk was named Chunk because he was fat. Data was named Data because he was super smart and he liked to build stuff and he had a lot of data in his head. He was smart. Well, it's not a direct translation like mouth for trunk, but it, it makes fucking sense. And if I missed it, I do not see Snacks doing anything throughout the movie to um, show why he has that name. Hell, there's another kid in the movie that would make more sense to be called Snacks. But uh, that like Snacks, I guess maybe because he's skinny, I don't know. And he could be a snack to predators. I, I don't know. I don't even know why kids would come up with that. But that just annoyed me. Because some of the nicknames just did not. It just felt like we're just going to copy the Goonies and give them nicknames. And it's like, no, the nicknames have to mean something, guys. They have to mean something. Even if it's simple. It's, it's not that hard. It's not that hard. Like, even Sandlot. Squints was named Squints because he wore glasses and he squinted when he took them off. Yeah, yeah was named Yeah, yeah, because he said Yeah, yeah after everything he said. You know? Like, fucking Smalls was named Smalls because he was small. And I think that was his last name, too. Um, you know, the, the, like, guys, it's not that hard. It's not that hard to give us a reason. And what, and so, yeah, going, my bad. going back to the characters, like, you got Snacks, and then you got Mighty, who's a diabetic, and, um, he has this, like, low device, and he has to eat food, you know, he has to eat a snack every once in a while, so why wasn't he called Snack, <laughs> and come up with a name for the other, I don't, see, 
It was easy. It was right there. You could have called Mighty Snacks because he had to eat snacks to keep up his blood pressure because I think he was diabetic or something. He had like an insulin device. Um, it kind of plays into the story, kind of not. But yeah, like, but they called him Mighty Pride because he was kind of big, but he wasn't really strong. I don't know, cause maybe because he was fat, because he was a little fat, but he wasn't like too fat. But I don't know. There, yeah, the nicknames were kind of weird. And uh, yeah, but Mighty is kind of just there. He does things. He's diabetic, but he doesn't really add to the story. Now Scribbles is kind of your bad boy, kind of your fucking. Um, I don't know, he kind of reminds me of Bender from The Breakfast Club, but not as cool and just not, like, interesting and awful. Like, all he does is, like, blackmail teachers and sit there and look cool. And they, when everybody else gets picked up from their parents for being at the haunted amusement park and being caught by the security guard, um... He just, he doesn't get picked up by his parents, he just leaves, which, and we never really see his parents in the movie, so either one, his parents are very unattentive of him, or two, he might not have parents, kind of like that kid in Over the Edge, he just might not have parents, I don't know, we're never get, we're never really given evidence of this kid having parents, I don't know, but um, and so you have Scribble, then you have Max, who's kind of the nerdy kid, and, you know, he makes up Max Facts, and, um, he's there, too, and he plays a part of the story, but again, not really interesting. Like, he's one of our more decent, like, him and Mighty are one of our more decent characters, but even him. Like, I'd say Mighty and Snacks are probably the most decent of the characters, but even Mighty has some issues, and, like, Snacks does too, but, like, um, th this kid is just creepy, and we'll get into that later, Max is just kind of creepy, and, um, there's a weird dynamic with this fucking group, which I will get into, but, uh, um, yeah, Max, uh, you, you know, he's... Max, he says things. <laughs> I guess they came up with something called Max Facts, where he's like lying, he's making fun stuff up, so they call it Max Facts, and he's kind of like the the like nerdy kind of redhead kid and shit like that. Like yeah, yeah. It sucks because I'm trying to explain these characters, and it's hard. It's really hard. Maybe other people could explain them better, but yeah. Um, and then you have Aaliyah, who's, like, the leader. She's, like, the only girl in the group, and she's very mean. She's very dickish, very hard, very tough person, very hard shell, and we find out her mom's kind of mean to her, and the boy, her mom's boyfriend mm -hmm. might be interested in her it's kind of implied slightly he steps in her path and offers her beers to hang out with him and that's kind of creepy but there's nothing they don't really show too much evidence that like is kind of there but it's kind of not and it's like we're supposed to just know this guy's a douchebag they don't really show it too much it's there kind of but like Again, not too much shown, so that's why she's supposed to be the way she is, but the problem with these kids is that, yeah, they fight with each other and stuff, but you can tell there's some com camaraderie there, even though they, they mess with each other and shit, that, and that's Goonie shit, so, uh, you know, that's a group of kids, they're gonna fuck with each if you've known each other for a while, you're gonna fuck with each other, you know, some of the insults are a little too... Mean, but you know, like, they're gonna do that shit. Especially if you got a little motherfucker like Bran in there who don't give a fuck because he's like this 10 year old who thinks he's fucking invincible and gonna be a fucking the next PewDiePie or Markiplier or some shit. And, um. But, yeah. Like, these kids 
are the bullies of the fucking school. Not all of them. I don't really think Snacks and Mighty really participate. And like, they do kind of make fun of some people behind their back, but they're not actively like fucking Scribbles is hacking in the shit and giving out people's information and blackmailing people. Bran is setting people's heads on fire and fucking making homeless people fight. Like I said before. Uh, Max kind of makes fun of the person, but again, he's not really active in the building. But Aaliyah, man. Aaliyah, or whatever her name is. The main girl. She, she's fucking always pushing people and fucking just being an awful human being. And we're supposed to be like, oh, her mom's mean to her. And it's a little bit of sympathy. And there's parts where it's kind of sympathetic, but at the same time, it's like, no. Because there's a little girl in their, there's this girl in their class, not little girl, but around their age, you know, most of them are teenage, like, high schoolers or uh, middle schoolers or whatever. I don't know exactly what. I think it might be high school. But, um, there's a scene where they're in class and the teacher, who's one of my favorite characters, is like, and this sets up the whole plot. Is like, look, we're talking about urban legends. You gotta learn how urban legends are spread, how they're fake, and like, this is the lesson: make your own urban legend. And they bring up this urban legend of Lockjaw, this like dude that lives in the fucking waste waters and is deformed and like goes after kids and stuff, but nobody can prove it. And Max is trying to defend all the urban legends, but the teacher, I think Mr. Lewis. Is the name keeps shutting him down, and I really like Mr. Lewis. He seemed really chill. He seemed like he cared about the lesson. He cares about the kids. He fucks with them a little bit, but you know he's a good guy. Mr. Lewis is probably the best character in this movie, besides maybe Snacks. Um, and uh, there's this girl in the class. Oh well, yeah, Judy too. Judy would probably be one of the best, but. She just crying because she gets really scared from stuff. And she just seems to be crying all the time and scared of everything. And the Aaliyah girl is in, uh, uh, or I don't know what her name is, but A, I'm just going to call her A, is mad about this. And she's like, why is she even in the class? Why is she even here? I hate her. We're in the same class, we get the same grades, but we're not the same person. You're not like me, bitch. You don't deserve to get the grades I get. You're not like me. And she just hates this person. Because they are they got issues. Because they obviously have some mental issues. And they're always scared and always crying. Which, yeah, I get it. If you're in class with someone like that, I get how it could be annoying. But at the same time, like, dude, you don't know what that person's going through. And I know kids don't really think about that, but you, they should. Like, you don't know what that person's going through. And, like, we don't really find out why she cries or anything, but, like, just, yeah. It just adds in these kids are just, yeah, most of them are just, uh, it's just not even, some of them, like, brands fun to watch. Okay. Max, I felt sympathy for a little bit, but he got really creepy at parts. Scribbles. Mess. Eh. Mighty was okay. He was just kind of there. I was okay with Mighty. Snacks. I, I like snacks. And, yeah, Bran was good to laugh at, but the rest of them were just... Uh, just, I don't know. I don't know, like, Aaliyah, like, sometimes I felt bad for her, but most of the time I was just like, do you just leave the movie? Could you just die? Could we just kill this girl? Because I don't, yeah. Alright, so, here's where shit picks up. They find a monster. They find a fucking monster in the amusement park, or in the, ha in the haunted uh, house. And they start holding it captive. And, uh, the mo the monster is, like, this mutant thing. It kind of looks like Tar Man a little bit. But not exactly. But it gave me Tar Man vibes. It's, like, got this black goo. Kind of skeletal. Kind of got these claws, almost. Very gooey. 
kind of interesting monster. I like I liked the monster. I thought the monster was cool. And they're like, let's make our urban legend project about this. So they start making videos of them torturing the monster and putting it online and getting lots of views. And while they do get the A, the teacher gets suspicious and is like, you gotta take it down. And then shit takes a dark path from there. Like, shit gets real. And this movie, um, I just feel like it doesn't really work as a coming of age story. And it kind of works as a monster movie, but not really. Like, I don't know, it's just, like, it's just, I don't know, this movie just is kind of a mess, because the thing is, is, there's a movie that's similar just called The Shed, and this kid gets a vampire trapped in the shed, and, like, you know, things happen, like, people start getting killed by it and stuff, and, uh, similar movie, not exactly the same, but I, I think does the premise better, The Pit, about a little sociopathic boy who finds a pit of monsters and starts luring his enemies there to be killed, um, and has a teddy bear telling him to do it, I think did this concept better, um, because the problem with this movie is, is these kids are just mostly unlikable pieces of shit. And I know the kid in the pit was kind of like that, but at least the kid in the pit was killing people that were bullying him or he felt wronged him. And like, yeah, he goes after innocent people too, but you also have like this thing with the talking teddy bear and shit. Like usually in these types of movies... The kids are being bullied. So even if they're like fucked up, you can tell like, okay, at least they're defending themselves. The problem with this movie, these kids are the fucking bullies. They are the bullies. And they're just taking innocent people and to this monster. And it's like, um... This is not really enjoyable. I mean, like, I will give it this. I felt for a lot of the kills in this movie. I felt for the kills because I actually liked the characters that were being uh, killed. So I was like, oh shit, no, not him. So it did something a horror movie should do. Like, um, I felt for the, the care. I felt for the deaths. The deaths uh, impacted me. So, that was good. But, it is a problem is most of the time we're spending our time with these kids. And, in this haunted house. And the haunted house is cool. I like the haunted house. I thought it was a good location. Um, I like how it had different alien areas. Like an alien area. And like a, like a fucked up dinner area. I like that. I like the location of the closed haunted house. But, just these kids are fucking... Annoying. And then there's a weird thing in the group where everybody's in love with the girl. Like, everybody. Like, because Bran keeps taking weird pictures of her, which I get. He's a little shit. So he's not really in love, but he's definitely, like, att attracted in a way. And then you got Scribbles, who's dating her. You got Max, who watches her undress, and they imply... Uh, jerks off to her. They literally talk about that. In the, the, the dad talks about that in the movie. It's fucking weird. And he's like watching her undress. And then you have Snacks who is implied had history with her. But like not really. I don't know. That could just have been talking about the monster. But there was a scene that seemed. I don't know. There seemed to be a deeper connection between um, him and Aaliyah than the rest of the movie was letting on, but that was never followed up. But yeah, the, the, even the dad's like, you like her, and she'll never like you back. So it's kind of implied that he likes her, and Mighty's looking at pictures of her, but 
And, like, there's a scene where she's, like, dancing. And she's trying to seduce Snacks. And essentially all the boys there in front of Scribbles. And it's fucking weird. And fucking... There's a few scenes like that. There's another scene where she's, like, dancing with Scribbles in this area. And it's supposed... I guess it's supposed to be an emotional moment, but it's just fucking weird. And it plays into the finale as, like, an emotional kind of moment. And it's like... Um... This was not emotional. This was just odd. Like, I like seeing the haunted house, but do we really have to do that? Do we really have to... That was just a part of the movie I just getting bored and kind of weirded out by and didn't really like. And it was like, yeah. But, um... Like, the shit this movie does right is the monster. We don't get to see too much of the monster. But, I like a lot of the shit they did with the monster. I like, uh, how he looks. I like how he can smell fear, even though that's not played on too much, but it's, like, implied, like, the one kid who has no fear can approach him, while some of the other kids who are afraid the monster will go after them. I like that. I like how he's named Crocamole, uh, but he's also goes by Lockjaw, but he's also uh, called Crocamole because uh, Brian messes up and says the word wrong. Um, I like these the kills. I thought the kills looked good, and they were impactful. They were sad, like I said. Most of them. Not all of them, but... Um, there's some off-screen depths in this, too, but... I thought that was all well and done. Nothing out of the ordinary, but... Simple, but effective. Um, yeah, and I like how the monster... Like, if you show no fear, he doesn't attack right away. He'll just chill with you and shit. Like, I like that. Like, I like how there's parts where he's giving the monster water and food. And, yeah. And, like, like there's there's some good shit in this movie. There's some really uh, good shit in this movie. But then there's just, like, it's just mainly that this movie is kind of... I don't know, disjointed, I guess. It just seems to rush from one thing to another thing to another thing. Like, shit kind of escalates, and... It just seems like... We get to, like, the more interesting stuff later in the movie, and most of the movie, we're just spending time with these kids that I genuinely don't like. That I don't like these kids, and I'm just waiting for them to die. And if they do die, you'll, you'll see. But the movie's cliche, so I bet you can figure it out. But, um, uh, but, uh, I just, like, I don't know. If we, I think this plot could have been done better if we had a group of likable kids. And they had, they found this monster. And they're like, oh, this is kind of cool because they're kind of out. Because, like, look at the monster. And they're, like, playing around with the monster and stuff. And, like, and then, like, um, you know, there's, they get the project, and they're, like, shooting videos of the monster doing things, and, like, maybe some kid picks on them and follows them to their place and accidentally gets killed by the monster, not on purpose, and then one of the kids is, like, pushed too far, and he starts lowering more of his enemies to the monster and maybe start to doing innocent people and then it's up for maybe some of the kids follow him and some of the kids don't it's up for some of the other kids to stop him like i think that would have been a more interesting plot than than this i just because i felt there were times i felt bad for the monster but i didn't feel bad for most of the kids besides like snacks and, and maybe mighty and it's, it's crazy because Mighty is diabetic and it doesn't really play into the story. They say the insolence might be driving the monster crazy, but they never really talk about that. And then they say it's fear instead, so it's like, it, him being diabetic is just kind of there. Which is fine, but I wish he was just more of a character in the story. Because he's just kind of a background character. 
and yeah, I just wish he had more because we focus more on snacks and Max and even Bran and hell, even Scrabbles more than we do him. He's just kind of there. And Aaliyah, of course, she's like the main person, but yeah, and I don't know, just show, give us a reason why these kids are fucked up. Like, I get like Bran's mom's annoying, but like, you don't need to explain Bran, just make Bran a little shit by nature, but just explain, like, especially Aaliyah, but we need more sympathy here. Because for someone this horrible, and yes, they are fucking horrible. And there's moments where I feel bad for them, and there's moments where I like them, but, like, the rest of the time they just go back to being fucking horrible. And I see glimpses of them being human, and it's like, I don't know, we need a little bit more of that, because I like fucked up horrible characters sometimes, but... And this movie did, just came out as annoying, spoiled fucking brats. Besides Bran, who is... Who, in my opinion, is more of a parody of an annoying, spoiled brat. So he just came off more as funny. But the rest of them were just annoying. Like, Max, like, even though I felt sympathy for him, time came off as annoying and scribbles and all that. Just They just, yeah. And the, the character work had to be much better. But, like I said, I like the setting of the haunted house I like the monster I like the stuff pertaining to the monster I like how I felt something when people died that you that sometimes doesn't happen in horror movies where you don't you just don't care for the characters but I like that I did care for these characters certain characters and uh, I did feel when some of them died and I was like oh shit not him oh shit not them like no I like them like you know so I like that, and I like the whole make your own urban legend aspect, and they make crocomoly for the internet. I like the internet aspect of people saying, oh, this is fake, this is fake, when it's actually a real monster, but people on the internet are saying it's fake, and they're like, we need to prove it's not fake, and it's like, we should throw the haters in there. <laughs> I thought that was funny. The YouTube commentary was kind of funny, too. I like the YouTube aspect, but, um... This movie as a whole, and I know this might not be the best review, I'm sorry, I know I've been rambling, but I don't know what I should give this movie. Maybe, uh, I know I was saying a 1.5, but maybe I, sh I would give it a 4 or a 3, like just below average, maybe below below average, maybe like, eh. like, I think this is a one time watch. Check it out. See what you think. You, I don't think this movie is a total piece of shit. There's good aspects. There's some good character moments in there. The the monster is cool. Even though I think they could have done more with the monster. But for like a lower budget movie. The monster was cool. The monster made its purpose. Even though I, f I wish we went a little bit more into the monster. But I do like that he's mysterious. But like maybe a little bit more about him. Or a little bit more screen time with him, but you know. Yeah, I, I do enjoy the monster, and I enjoyed this movie. Well, I enjoyed some of this movie. I can't lie, I can't say I enjoyed this movie. I enjoyed some of this movie. I don't know if I'd be watching this again. I'm, I'm glad I watched it once. It was interesting for a one time watch. I would watch another movie with Crocomoly in it The Monster, Lockjaw, or whatever. And not the kids in it. Without the story, I would watch a whole different movie. And I do, I do like. I won't give it away. I do like what happens to one of our characters at the end, because there's a moment where you think, "Oh no!" Like one thing's gonna happen to one person. And not the other, but they switch it where it's the right way, how it should be. And it's good. It's fucking good. It's a good little moment. It got me. It got a verbal response out of me. I was like, I was like, oh no. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh no. <laughs> like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Never mind, movie. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So there, there's a good moment there. But yeah, I, I think I'll... I think I gotta go with a free because the movie 
is kind of a mess, and it is annoying to get through some of the kids, because they are just unlikable. Like, most of them are very unlikable. But, yeah. Um. But, yeah. Um. Thanks for watching. Um. We'll see if any new videos happen anytime soon. Uh, probably not. This was just, like, off the cuff. But, um. Yeah. I hope you guys have a good day. Uh, stay frosty. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, this is Trenchy signing off. Beep, boop, boop.